Thanks to the Wiseman Center and to Matt Holyoke. It's also a pleasure to be here from uh, the Innocence Project, which is in New York, affiliated with Cardozo Law School and Maddie DeLone. Kenny's story is uh, a remarkable story. His suffering was remarkable. Betty Ann's adventure uh, through life to free him was pretty unparalleled among the advocates, but every one of the now 251 men and women in this country who have been exonerated by DNA and the hundreds of others who have been exonerated by other means have endured and suffered lots uh, to get where they are, uh, which is eventually free. And for many of them, that freedom never can come because in many cases, a third of them, the cases that we take on, the DNA evidence has been lost or destroyed. And so one can never prove the claim and people in general then stay inside with no hope uh, of release. Who are the 250? Uh, they come from all over the country, uh, including uh, nine in this state who were later exonerated by, uh, through DNA testing. Together they have served over 3,000 years in America's prisons, an average of 13 years apiece. 16 of them pled guilty. Uh, 17 of them served time on death row before they were finally freed. Their average age of conviction is 26, so a few years from now for most of you. And they were uh, 13 years later, 39 or 40 when they were released. So imagine either what was going on 13 years ago or imagine being 40 and missing you know, that piece of time, uh, time you haven't yet experienced. They miss time raising families, they miss time with parents, with loved ones, with communities. Over 60% of the exonerated in America are African American, over 70% people of color. All of them had parents or partners or children and all had families and friends. All of them, when they got out, struggled eventually to try to create a life outside. The Innocence Project was started by Barry Sheck and Peter Neufeld um, in 1992 when they, after they exonerated uh, the first client with DNA testing and the project has gone on to exonerate over a hundred of the 250 people and we've participated in most of those exonerations, often consulting with lawyers around the country. The Innocence Project has uh, four missions. Uh, the first is to exonerate uh, the innocent using DNA when we can and free them, to learn the lessons from the miscarriages of justice that we uncover, what went wrong, why did an innocent person get convicted. Almost every one of them had a full criminal trial or a criminal trial, some of them a little less full than others, um, with appeals and often petitions to the federal courts through habeas corpus and were, and were denied uh, freedom. We push for reforms to prevent wrongful convictions from happening again, or things to that the police and prosecutors can do to prevent wrongful convictions in the first place, and to work to compensate the men and women who are freed with DNA and other means. And we work to educate the public and law enforcement and politicians about the problems of wrongful convictions and the solutions. Betty Ann mentioned the long list. Uh, over the now 17 years that the project's been around, um, we've heard from close to 30,000 prisoners in America. Right now we have about 8,000 people someplace in the queue. We represent currently 275 prisoners from most states in the country, and uh, there are many, many more to come. So the waits are long. Um, and it, in some ways, because of the destruction of evidence, it really is a race against time till we get to them. At this point, there's also in this country, and I'll just, um, these are sort of the exonerations by state uh, in states like Texas, New York, Illinois, which you can probably pick out the darker colors. There have been more than 20 exonerations, and as the shades go down, 11 to 19, 6 to 10 in a couple of states with only a few, and some states sort of in the middle of the country and a little bit out west uh, and Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, none. It doesn't mean that there aren't innocent people there. It may mean that they destroy all of the biological evidence, and it may mean that there just aren't prisoners who have had a chance to get to us or to get to another project. 
Right now, there are 47 Innocence Network projects around the country and seven projects in other countries, all of them English-speaking so far, Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand, Canada, and the UK. Most of those other projects work primarily to exonerate people with evidence other than DNA, so be it finding witnesses that weren't there um, or other evidence uncovering misconduct by prosecutors and police. But we work only when we believe DNA uh, can, can prove innocence. And we do that because then there is much less of, and often not an argument at all, that the person is truly innocent. And we can skip the part of debating that question and just move on to what went wrong and what could we do to make the system fairer and more just. Specifically in the area of policy, the Innocence Project has a number of priorities and they're listed here. DNA testing access and evidence preservation, that is creating statutes that will allow people access into court once their final appeal has been exhausted. There are now um, such statutes in 47 states and I'll show you them in a minute. Improving eyewitness identification practices because we find that in 75% of the uh, DNA exonerations, there was at least one and sometimes as many as six or eight misidentifications by witnesses. Uh, forensic oversight or improvements in forensic science. In a little over half of these 250 cases, there was bad science, either unvalidated or uh, erroneous or fraudulent science introduced uh, in the cases that, that convicted people in the first place and we have reforms that we think will help reduce those errors and those, um, those problems. False confessions in almost 25 percent of the cases our clients confessed, gave full confessions or gave admissions against their own interest to law enforcement. Um, and we have reforms that we think will prevent uh, the introduction of false confessions. The creation of innocence commissions where multidisciplinary teams of people look at uh, the cases in their jurisdiction the way wrongful convictions have been proved to try to again learn locally what the problems were. And then we work on exoneree compensation um, because these people have uh, endured a lot and the miscarriages of justice should somehow be compensated. These are the states where uh, there are now post-conviction DNA testing statutes. Um, there are 47 of them. You can see that Massachusetts is a state that does not have a law. Uh, Oklahoma is another and Alaska is the third. Massachusetts, we want a law because now we want them in all 50, but unlike the other two states, we are actually able to get the Massachusetts courts and Massachusetts prosecutors to do DNA testing post-conviction. We just think it makes sense and will be easier for everyone if there's a simple statute to go back to court uh, under. So we continue to work through the client cases and continue to screen people for further representation and work with our colleagues around the country. Um, we do it primarily because of the men and women that we can free and the change we, we see and hope to see more of that can come from, um, from the lessons we've learned from all that they have endured. As Barry Sheck sometimes says, all their suffering must mean some, be good for something. And so uh, we hope it is and we, we're honored and privileged to work on their behalf uh, every single day. And I thank you for listening.